H is here with heart. You can write there, here with heart. My brother, my sister, there's many guys, they've heard the word of God. And the danger, your danger, the, your danger, everybody focus and write down. Students, leaders, leaders, I'm going to fire you. Students, you'll be gone if I find you that you're not writing down. Oh, I'm not forcing you, I'm just... Encouraging you to stay in Kriari. <laughs> okay. What are we saying? Okay. What are we saying? Here with heart. Many guys, many guys, many guys have heard the word of God, but they just heard it. They didn't take it in their hearts. But many times we are deceived thinking, when I understand what God is saying, only then I take it in my heart. So I will determine with my mind if I'm going to take it to heart. When I, I will determine if I will take it and put it in my heart to keep it in my heart. And what my mind says to be in control, only if we understand what he said, then we will take it to our hearts. Because it's scary if you could take the word of God in your hearts and it doesn't work out. Or you've tried it and it didn't work. Or you sit here but your heart is in compromise and with your mind you are justifying the whole time. I've heard that before, yes, 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 but this, this, this. And your mind is so actively busy to make sure that the word will not fall into your heart because you cannot have that guts. To take it in your heart because what if it will have to cause me to change certain things especially if my heart is in compromise the heart more dangerous than the devil your heart the most deceiving what you need to guard is not first of all guard yourself against the devil no guard your heart guard your heart not just not just against the enemy, especially against yourself, your flesh. Guard your heart, because from there is the springs of, well, springs of life. Are you with me? So it can be like that missile, that, that atom bomb, that can just destroy that whole nation in one time. So it can be very dangerous. Your heart can be very dangerous. Because through your heart you are linked to hell. And through your heart you are linked to heaven. Because the overflow of your heart is in your tongue. And the word says in James 2, your tongue is lit from the fire from hell. But you know, like the tongues of fire, tongues of fire here yeah, that came with the day of Pentecost. Hello. A thousand times more. How much more when you speak and the fire of heaven is there? When you speak and the fire of heaven is there. That means, my brother, my sister, when you speak, those demons, they are, it's like burning them. It's like burning them. Don't you new generation say, hey, he's burned. Well, how do you say that? Oh, he's burned. He, you burn him, you know? You don't know about that. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. <laughs> so, bottom line, what you speak can destroy. What you speak can purify. Amen. And the Holy Spirit must tell you the difference. But when you hear with your heart, that can make all the difference. 2 Corinthians 3, 3. Clearly, you are an epistle, a letter of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. That is of the heart somebody's going to write something on your heart my brother my sister if you don't actively decide it's the holy spirit other demons will just rock up and say okay he didn't choose the spirit therefore he chose us he's not like i choose the spirit of lust i choose the spirit of bitterness i choose the spirit of offense to write something please come right on my heart who will be so stupid maybe the satanist priest but the ones that are more deceived is the ones don't realizing that they've done that by saying not actively, Holy Spirit come and write on my heart. It's ministered to you by people. 
It's ministered to you when you sit with the Word of God. It's ministered to you when you look at creation and you allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. Then it will be written on your heart. And you will be a letter of Christ. Or you will be some other horrific script of some other freaky movie. Don't let it be so. Don't let it be so. Are you with me? We always said... In the past, with some teachings, we said, on a Sunday, we open up the letter and let there be written some things, some things. And then the, the demon of religion is writing certain things. I've heard that before. You've heard that before. You know you need to change, but it's not going to work. And then the Spirit of God writes certain things. And then some demon writes certain things. And that absolutely confused letter, then you close it. And on a Monday, it's, it's uh, in the envelope. And you walk with the envelope, but the, nobody's going to read the letter of Christ because you're used to such a lifestyle. So they just see there's an envelope. They don't know what's inside of you. They don't know, even know how you stand with God. They don't even know Father's heart for them because they cannot read it through life. They can read whatever hell is giving them, whatever letters their flesh and their, the condemnation and the demons and the circumstances are telling their success is a letter telling them, now you are something, setting them up so that when success is not there, they know that you want just one big failure. Okay, but somewhere there's a letter from Christ sent into that university, sent into that school, sent into Bluefontaine, sent into the politics, sent to be read, to know, oh, we know what Christ is saying, because that guy is a letter from Christ. Holy Spirit was the ink. And this is what Christ is saying to politics. This is what Christ is saying to the university. This is what Christ is saying to Bluefontaine. But will we allow it? If you take it from the heart. If you don't let it come in and go. Come in and go. Come in and go. Yeah, that, that's not going to work. Are you with me? So you will hear the law. And you are under the law. You will see the heart. You will hear with the heart. Then you find the heart of God in the law. Or you will be law, there will be lawlessness. Under the law. In the law. Lawlessness. Lawlessness is you can do whatever you want, flirt with whatever demon, the darkness, uh, fellowship with demons. Under the law is under the curse of religion. I must, I mustn't. I feel condemned. I, I'm supposed to and all that thing. But in the heart of the law, what was Father God's heart when he gave the Ten Commandments? We're just going with that. So in Exodus 19, you can write it down. Those who've done perspective, you're supposed to remember. When God took them out of Egypt, God took you out of the rubbish and the slavery, he brought you not to Canaan into the blessing, he brought you to himself. I've taken you out of Egypt and brought you to myself. And where was that? In the desert. I brought you to the desert. Oh, thank you, Lord. Huh. Moses said to Pharaoh, let God's people go. God says, let my people go so that they can worship me in Canaan. No, so that they can worship me in the desert. So that they will go three days, moving for three days, and worship me in the desert. God is taking you out of Egypt to bring you in the desert, my brother, my sister. You can pray for Canaan, and you will moan and groan when God takes you in the desert. You just pray for the promises to be revealed in your life, promises to receive everything, instead of, get me out of the rubbish to see you, Lord. Get me out of the rubbish to understand eternal life, and that is knowing you. That's hearing his heart. His heart, Why? You must get out of Egypt. Why he wants to take you out of Egypt? Why is dealing with the demonic forces? Why is opening the Red Sea for you? To bring him to yourself. And him, sorry, to bring him to himself. Are you with me? Heart to heart connection. Then God says, who are you? You are my special treasure. If you obey me, if you obey me, if you hear with your heart and do it, then you will be my special treasure. Kingdom of priests, kingdom of priests, saying there in Genesis, the eternal destiny, eternal destiny, you will reign as kings and priests with me forever and ever. Exodus 19. And then after he laid the foundation of what is my heart for you? Hear my heart. And only after you're supposed to hear his heart, then he give the Ten Commandments. After he laid the foundation, hear my heart. You need to hear with your heart. Heart to heart connection with God. There is no life without it. He desired a relationship where his heart is shared with our hearts, our hearts with his heart. 
That's what eternal life is all about. Are you with me? So, first commandment. What are we saying? There's five commandments that is all about you and God. You have it? Can write it here. Five commandments that's about you and God. I'm going to slaughter you, students, in love, if you don't write down. Five commandments between you and God. Then five commandments between you and your neighbor. So there's five about you and your brother and your sister around you, and there's five about you and God. You have it. First one, you will have no other gods before me. What is God saying? My child is me and you. There's nobody else at this table. We're going to have quality relationship, but it's heart to heart. It's eye to eye. It's me and you in this relationship. We can have nothing else because this is going to be quality. It's, it's me and you. That's the first one. Second one, you will not create something and bow before it and worship it. You will not, don't make with your own hands something and say, this is, this is my God and worship, bow down before it. What is God saying? I, me and you, there will be this pure, clean, intimate relationship. Pure, clean, intimate worship. You will be captivated by me. You will wow about me. Hello? Are you here? Between me and you, that will be there. And you will love me with a passion. There will be a passion between me and you. The passionate love that I have for you, that I would give my everything for you, that type of love will be in you, and you will give your everything for me because we will have this passionate relationship called love. What is God saying? It's not the love of money, the love of that, the love of that. But that's an unclean love. That's a selfish love. But there's a love laying down yourself for one another. That's a beauty in a certain love. There's a beauty in a certain worship. So God says, it's me and you, and me and you alone. God says, in this, me and you alone, there will be a passionate love, and there will be a captivated, pure, clean worship, where you will wow, wow about me. That's number two. Number three. You will not use the name of the Lord in vain. Oh, that's why the name of Jesus must be the swear word in every second, third movie. Not, it's going to change in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What are we saying? God says there must be respect in this relationship because it's not cheap. It's me and you. But my grace is not cheap. It's me and you, and there's passion, and there's love, and there's worship, and there's wow. But it must come from a heart that has respect for me. Because when you have respect for me and respect for my name, you will see breakthrough upon breakthrough, breakthrough upon breakthrough. You will run into the name of the Lord, and you will be safe, and you will be saved. Name of the Lord is a strong tower. There's a safety for you when you come with your whole heart and have your respect for my name. Because I give you my name. I trust you so much. I give you my name that you can use my name. Use my name where you go. And hell will run from you. Hell will run from you. I give you my protection. I give you my name. This is Father speaking. Or you can under the law. I'm not allowed to use the name of the Lord in vain. I can be so stupid, just put myself under the law and not hear God's heart. Well, I can see a father that has so absolutely be the best for me, that trusts me, even giving me his name. Go in my name. I will identify with you. And I believe that the enemy will recognize me when you use my name. And hell cannot stand against you. Are you here? That's number three. Not use the Lord of, name of the Lord in vain. When you know, when you're using it in vain, it's not when you are angry and you shame, you say, Jesus. It's when you pray. It's when you just sing the song, Jesus, I love you. But, you know, I've heard the song. I've heard the song. I just sing it. You just blase. I go through it. Um, I see it as cheap. I don't see the name that it really has an impact on me. I, I just go through the motions of of saying the name, but, you know, it doesn't really touch me. I don't, I, I'm not going into a place like the guys in the army and there's somebody that they really have respect for immediate, there's immediate response. The guy that's just sitting there and the, 
that um, general of the army is coming and you watch him and yes hello um, how are you I love you I respect you and <laughs> he will laugh at you and say get this crazy soldier out of this place but when when you respect the name of the Lord you don't use it in vain when the name is mentioned something happens something of respect if he done it according to your demand According to, I give you two out of ten, Jesus, because you didn't do this and you didn't do that. I'm, 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 I'm hearing, but it didn't work for me this week. I prayed for this and it didn't happen, and or I'm in compromise. And two out of ten, that will be my response. Ten out of ten is when his name is mentioned. There's something of respect rising up in my spirit. My spirit will respond with respect, with respect. Don't use the name of the Lord in vain in your flesh, in your personality, in how you position your life not to have respect for Jesus. Are you still here? That's the heart of God for you, man, between you and God. Number four. Gedenk the Sabbath day. Gedenk the Sabbath day. What is it? Remember my, the Sabbath day. Okay? Two. Have the seventh day of rest. Jesus, God, God worked for six days and the seventh day he rested. Was it because he was tired? No, no. It was the place of, of fulfillment. The place of fulfillment. Jesus says, I'm your Sabbath rest. I'm your place of fulfillment. I'm your place of being satisfied. I'm your place to be at peace and feel oh, the accomplishment. But he is my place of accomplishment. You've written the accomplishment down. He is your place of accomplishment. You've written that down. Let it be so. And in that place of accomplishment, satisfaction, that's where you rest. That's the place of rest. But God is saying, your time is mine. Like God ordered Old Testament, seventh day, not you, your donkey, your baboon, if they had the pets or whatever everything every everybody, everybody will rest what is God saying your time is mine I've given you the opportunity called time so if I say this is your time now to testify this is your time to have to go into the word and be with me if God you, you ask him about your time God what do you want me to do this week and God says to you oh if you're open for that God says half an hour with me every every day Are you here? God will not say, uh, take the week off, tell the leaders you're going to do nothing, you're just going to be with me. Uh, we will hear from the Lord about that word. <laughs> but God, God will always speak according to his character, where that involves faithfulness. Amen. God will tell you, do this as if unto me. God will tell you, uh, encourage people in this week. God will say, what we're going to do sometime, and this is not... This one, that one, that one. I thought about this. Um, when we have this, uh, this fasting and prayer for the elections, there will be some fasting and prayer. So either you're going to fast from the food, uh, but we, maybe we're going to do something with the young people that, that could scream for that and maybe do some fasting from cell phone. Um, I don't know. We will just hear from God. Maybe the thing that you are busy with the most, that you get the kick of the most you must maybe fast from that thing for a week i know we appear that will be your your wife you know the biggest kick in your life okay not kick in your life but <laughs> okay what are we saying no no don't look so depressed now you go and hear from god what maybe you how you must bring your focus it's in any case about focus. Ah, that was number four. Time. Number five. Honor your father and your mother that you will inherit the destiny that I have for you. What are we saying? No, but, but this is now about people and people. The five here is about people and people. No, no, no. This is the last one we got. Well, just to say, I promise you, this is the only commandment with a promise. You want your destiny. You want your dream. You want your future. Cursed are you to die in the desert if you don't respect those I gave you. 
those that are close to you, the leaders that are close to you, that I've given you, the people that are close to you, they are, they are like fathers, mothers in your life. If you don't respect them, you will not have your destiny. Because with that respect, how did Satan lose his destiny? He had no respect for God the Father. No respect. He said, I can do. I can be God. Look at my beauty. The most beautiful angel in heaven. Leading the worship. Leading the wow. And I'm the most beautiful in the wow. I can do it. But you know... The enemy has respect. The enemy has respect. Oh man, the enemy can recognize authority. The enemy has respect for God. So when he just put his feet there, that demonic guy ran to him and, said, and the, all the demons said, Are you, I, did you come to punish us before our time? He ran to Jesus and said, did you come, to, come to punish us before our time is, is over? We are still here to destroy humankind. We are still here to, de to deceive people. We are still here to make a mockery of the crown of creation. We are still here to let them fall and fall and fall into rubbish. Our time is not yet over. Basically what they say. They recognize authority. But you, uh, you come in the place of respect, from a place of humility. From humility, you can honor. Demons honor authority. Demons. There's not one percent where they don't know. They know that's half a second when that person with respect will use the name of Christ and say, go in Jesus' name. They must live in the split of a second. They know authority. <laughs> but not from a place of humility. But you when you come with a place of humility, not justify yourself for whatever, whatever attitude you can have. But from a place of humility, your honor is in worship. And when from a place of humility, God will lift you up to run into your dreams, run into your destiny. That what he has for you far above, exceedingly above all that you can think or pray, he has for you. And you will reach it. If you understand. Honor your father and your mother if they are right or wrong. You are not there as a judge. But God said, this is a key. This is the only key. Okay, are you with me? This is you and God. Hear his heart. Hear with your heart what he says with his heart unto you. Amen. When you know this, then you read the commandments. You don't sit in self-condemnation. You say, wow, yes, Lord, here I am. Here I am. The truth is drawing, drawing me into where he is. Now the five between you and your brother and your sister. Five about that. The first one is thou shalt not kill. Who wants to stand up and slaughter somebody? Maybe somebody in the physical, but not necessarily like that. You, what is God saying? My son, I don't allow anybody to destroy your life. This is my law. Nobody is allowed to kill you. Nobody is allowed to destroy your life, even with words. Life and death in the power of the tongue. You talk rubbish about somebody. Okay, your tongue is connected with hell and demons. They make a mockery of you, man. You're the comedy from hell for the demons. When you speak behind that guy's back and you, Skinner, what is Skinner? You gossip. You gossip about that guy and you, so that you can feel better. What a pathetic pathetic way of seeing yourself that you need to break somebody else down for you to feel better that's comedy for the demons they can sit back because you don't know who you are in christ don't know who you are in christ thou shalt not kill you will not kill with the words that lady's life the guys and you're saying like we said many times for the second last time maybe now in the season. The ANC, they're like this. The EFF, like, like this. The phrase front, they're like that. ACDP, they're like that. These guys are like that. Make sure your tongue is not lit up from hell so that the fire from hell, you can throw hell's fire to all these guys. Zuma is like this. That guy, that guy is like that. Okay, your tongue is connected with a fire from hell. Thou shalt not kill. You can say their policy, their policy. Everybody say policy. Their policy, that thing is from hell. 
But the person is, is born in the heart of the Father. Who the hell are you to curse the one that is made in the image of God? What a most freaky arrogance do you have? And go and tell it to brothers and sisters. So many in churches, so many Christians that are cursing one another with the, that curse is from hell. You have no right except to pray according to the word of God. Thou shalt not kill. That's God's heart. Second one. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's only for people that are married. Ah, you are first the wife of Christ the man. You are the bride of Christ. He is the bridegroom. God says, I have given you certain quality relationships and they are not allowed to be unfaithful to you. You are not allowed to be unfaithful in relationships that if that guy is doing something wrong, I will withdraw my heart. I cannot trust one because that one hurt me. Who gave you the right for that? Sorry. You cannot commit adultery. If God has placed certain people in your lives, you will keep your heart open. and You will keep your heart available to that person. That person cannot trample on your heart because your heart belongs to God. Hello. So understand. Where is your heart? Because my brother, you have, you have three. There's three parts of you. If you have two parts, you call yourself baboon. Look in the mirror and say, hello, baboon. Okay? You are a spirit living in a body and you have a soul. Soul, personality, emotions, will, uh, intellect, my, mindsets, all this stuff. Living in a body. A body must be a temple of the spirit or it will be a temple of demons. Okay. So... Your spirit reborn. What did the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit came. He came. He spoke to you. Spoke to you until you realized, I need Christ. And open, when you opened up your life and said, Jesus, come and be my Savior. Holy Spirit came and whew, gave you a new spirit. Gave you a new spirit. The spirit that was dead from the day in Adam, through Adam. When you eat from this fruit, you will surely die. Boom, he just collapsed dead. No, 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 his spirit died in that state. He was dead towards God. But through the rebirth, Holy Spirit came and he brought the rebirth in you. And the spirit became alive. Holy Spirit in you. But through baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's then Holy Spirit over you, Holy Spirit next to you, Holy Spirit from behind, in front, guiding you all around you, the wall of fire. That's something else. Uh, are you with me? Uh, are you still here? And when you open up your heart, what is now the thing? You have a physical heart. Doo -doof, doo -doof, doo -doof, doo -doof. Then you have your heart that you can now waste and throw your heart in your soul that your emotions feel this. When you are down, you say, my, I'm, in my heart, I'm down. You submit this quality heart that God has given you a new heart, but you throw this new heart under your emotions, under your Thought patterns under the chamors, under the compromise that you have in your mind, double mindedness, so that you can become double hearted. But God did a new thing in your heart. Put your heart where your spirit is, where everything is perfect. Holy Spirit, testify in your spirit, and your heart is there. Your heart is there. Your heart is there where the Holy Spirit testify in your spirit. You put your heart where there's a perfection, where there's quality, quality in you. And you keep it there. Don't bring it into the area of your soul. Are you still here? And from that place, you will hear what God is saying. You will hear with your heart, and your heart will hear the right things. The word says, and he said in his heart, or he heard in his heart the following. Mary, the angel spoke to Mary. Hello? And the word says, she kept the word in her heart. Until the day Jesus was born through her. The mother of Jesus. The word says she kept the word in her heart. Oh my brother, my sister. Let it be precious to you that you will keep the word of God in your heart. But the enemy knows the principle. So somebody do you wrong. You will keep that haha word of bitterness in your heart. For what that lady did to you. Or what that guy did to you. Or what. Are you with me? What that teacher said, that you'll be a failure, a failure, you are stupid, you are pathetic, whatever. You'll keep that word in your heart so that it will make you miserable and eat up your life so that there's not, nothing left of you. 
Go and live in that dustbin. Okay? Are you with me? Because that's where you believe you. Because you believe that's who you are. No, 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 man. Are we with one another? We are still here. So come on. Put your heart in the right place. Okay? You are with me? We are with? You will not commit adultery. You will not commit adultery. People will not quit on you. On you. They are, I command them not to quit on you. There's quality relationships that I've given you, and they are, they are commanded not to quit. Your wife cannot quit on you. Your husband cannot quit on you. Your leaders cannot quit on you. The people around you cannot quit on you. That's what he's supposed to be. God is trying. He's not trying. He, he wants to protect you. That's his heart. His heart is, you are my child. Nobody can steal from you. Nobody can kill you. Nobody can quit on the relationship with you because you are precious. So the third one was, thou shalt not steal. Nobody's allowed to steal from you, my son. Nobody's allowed to steal from you, my daughter. I, that's my commandment. They're not allowed to steal from you. That's what I have for you. Do you hear his heart or do you hear under the law? Hear his heart. Amen. What you don't understand is how amazing, amazing, amazingly God wants to be there for you. Amen. There's some of the, the third one. That's the eighth commandment. The fourth one that is applicable for you and other human beings. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not false, give false testimony. You're not allowed. Nobody's allowed to lie about you. Nobody is allowed to talk nonsense about you. That's what your father is saying. They, will only, they are only allowed by me to speak what I'm saying about you. So my brother, my sister, you have something to say about somebody else? It must be what God is saying. Many times when people say, no, I'm just sharing my heart. I say, it's go. Cool. It's okay. Go with it. But is that what God is saying about that person? If you are saying what that God is saying about the person, okay, you and God are saying the same. Otherwise, you and demons are saying the same. You and a demon, uh, what demon told you this? And they said, uh, introduce and say, uh, I'm demon so and so and so. Uh, will you please agree with me uh, in the following way about that person and about that guy and about that uh, nation or about that leader? Yo, yo. <laughs> we can mock we can wara wara around with this, but that was the Ten Commandments. The ten prince, major ten principles that God gave the nation after he imparted identity and destiny into the nations of who they are and where they are going with him. Okay, that's number nine. Number ten, you shall not covet, you shall not desire, you shall not greet, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or husband, or Ferrari, or ox, or whatever. Money, or whatever. Why? God says, what you have, I've blessed you with. Be thankful. You have a thankful. <laughs> Be thankful. Be, what's for Be content. Be content with what you have. Be thankful and content with what you have. Don't be jealous on others for what they have. The first thing our brother slaughtered another brother was jealousy. Cain and Abel. Do that. Destroy others. Destroy others and then destroy your destiny by destroying them. Cain. Ah, uh, Cain. Cain. Destroy your brother and through that you will destroy your destiny, Cain. Okay? Because of jealousy. Because you feel threatened by that person. Or because you feel that guy did something wrong. Uh -uh, that's not where it's going to happen. Not if you walk with God. I'm saying here with heart. Here with heart. But get messed up in all the stuffies. How on earth will you hear God's heart for your future? How on earth will you hear God's heart for you and your wife or your husband or your kids or your future kids? How can you hear God's heart? Is it Forget about it, man. Don't waste your time. If you have the whole time petty issues with these prin basic principles that God is giving you, be excited about me. No, in me I have given you everything. So with contentment in your heart, 
and with a thankfulness in you. Be excited about what I've given that person and that person and that person. Because you've prayed for 30 years for this and it never happened. That guy became a Christian. He's still a great knoll, you know. And he just prayed once and boom, then he received it. There's something different for you than for that man. Totally something different. Let your heart not be in the blessing. Then you will be very jealous. Let your heart be in God. And then hear his heart for your life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. That was introduction. Praise the Lord. Then, the first one, really, we're talking about. But the seed in the good soil. These are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. So what are we talking about? You know, the, 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 the scary thing is the guy where, where the word was picked up by all the birds. The word says, he took the word in their hearts. But he, that guy made it, I took it in my heart, but it was like, it's food for them. My heart is just a table, table to present it to whatever demon wants to take the food. Those birds, they're taking the, the, the word from your heart. That's the demonic that's about the thief come to kill, steal, and destroy. You know the first thing he wants to kill, steal, and destroy is not taking your money or your car or your this or that. The first thing he must make sure he can steal is the word of God. As The thief must steal the word of God. As long as they can steal the word of God from your heart, they will win. They will win. Because superficial, your relationship with God will be. Your relationship with God will be superficial. That will be it. Are you with me? So you can position yourself that you will not hear with heart. Because you hear what he said and you take it. Yes, I take it. I believe it. But tomorrow, it doesn't matter what happens. It's like, boom, it's gone. Whatever demon wants to have some food, instead of you eating the word, those demons can take the word. Those birds can take the word. You give some food for the birds. Because you are, your heart is like the road. It's flat. There's no depth in it. It's just a table for the birds to have some food. But the word will not be your food. The word will be the food for those birds. Because you don't hear with the heart. Are you, are you with me? Then, then, then what, what is happening with the heart? You can have a hardened heart. The heart that is hardened. God want to take out the heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh. But there's such a lot of stones in there that... Even though you take the word, like the scripture says, the sower with the seed, it was the, 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 the seed was in there, but when it started to grow, there was no space. There was no space. It could not be caused such a lot of heart issues in your life about stuff. A heart rock in your heart about this guy or about this or about that. A hardness towards yourself that you don't forgive yourself for what happened. Hello? So, cannot find the root, cannot find the root. Because you're so aware of the rocks in your heart more than the seed in your heart. And then the last one about that was uh, the heart with all the. What do you mean? All those rubbish. Rubbish seed in your heart. Because you leave that seed in your heart. All that rubbish you left, left in your heart. Hello? So when the, the seed that is from God start to grow, it's, you suffocate. It suffocates because the worries of the world, the lust of the eyes, all these, all these stuffies. And the word suffocate, it cannot, uh, it cannot grow. When you start to read the word, there's just a suffocation. You know there's demonic presence. You read the word, but you cannot read the word. You, can, you have time for everything, but when you think of the word, you think, oh, I must read the word. Or, oh, no, there's no time. When you find that, that suddenly when you must, now you need to go and read the word, and suddenly all these voices come to you. You know there is demonic presence in your life. Get it out in Jesus' name. Demonic presence in the church of Christ. He needs to go. He needs to go. He does not need to go. God must clean the church with his word. Are you here for the 60th? 36 hundred fold harvest. What is the fruit? The fruit is obedience. Bear fruit with perseverance. What does it mean? It will not just happen. Perseverance, it must, 
you must push forward that you will always have the fruit, always have the fruit of the Spirit, always have the fruit that God wants. And the fruit, the essence of the fruit is obedience. Obedience. You are still here? Great. Next one. 2 Thessalonians 2. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father comfort, strengthen your, your what? Your hearts in every good work and word. Good works God has prepared for you, but God don't want those good works if it does not come from your heart. Don't work at Kriari, don't work on the farm. What a curse, what a pathetic life if you don't do it from your heart. What a shame if you know the Creator and you cannot do it for Him. You cannot put your heart in it because you are so deceived. Don't go and work there in Bloemfontein. Don't say you're an ambassador of Christ. Don't say you do this, what you do for God. Rather, just say nothing. Because making a fool of yourself is saying, I'm doing this for God. But then you don't do it from your heart as an honor unto the Lord. Comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. God is not there to comfort your heart, to strengthen your heart so that your heart is strengthened and your heart is comforted. No, it's for a purpose. Your heart is comforted. Your heart is strengthened. Comforted because your heart, you are hard, so you are broken hearted many times. You are, you're going through things where your heart can, can be hurt. God knows that. God knows that. But God says, I will strengthen your heart. You are still here? Allow God to do that so that in every good work that he has prepared for you, you are able to do that as if unto the Lord. Amen. Next one. That's what it was, the rich young man. Jesus looked at him, laughed him, and said, one thing you lack, go and sell everything that you have, uh, and give it to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven, then come follow me. And this man fell. He went, he just fell down, and he went away sad because he had great wealth. Because his heart was in his wealth. His heart was in his success. His heart was in, his, what he, in what he had. Oh man, he came to Jesus. Oh, come on, we've done, talked about this. He was, I mean, he ran to Jesus. He asked, what must I do to be saved? Teachable. He, uh, he, Jesus said, do all these things. He said, God, all these things I do. And then God nailed him. On this one thing. No, 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 no. He looked at him. He loved him. And because he loved him like a father that loves his son, he will discipline. If he loves his son. If he gives up on his son, there will be no discipline. Okay. But he loved him and he said, this you lack. This you lack. Because you get, need to get your heart out of that. It doesn't mean now for the rest of his life, God never going to bless him. No. No, but God says, I mean, God, see how that heart is rooted in destruction, rooted in the finances, rooted, I need to go and work because I need money so that I can this. What a pathetic sentence. If God says so, yes. If God not, what are you doing with your life? When you hear the word, you will just be saddened because you're not going to do what it says. The root of all evil, greed, love of money, May God help you. God help me. Amen. Next one. Guard your steps. Everybody say, guard your steps. Write this down. This is a very important one. For to draw near to hear and obey. Everybody say, hear and obey. Remember this verse, please. That's the series of this 20 weeks. Hear and obey. It's better than to give the sacrifice of fools carelessly Irrele, irrele, irreverently. Too ignorant to know that they are doing evil. What are we talking about? Sacrifice of fools. That's you sitting here, but because you must. That's a fool. That's a sacrifice of a fool. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Just do what you're supposed to do so that you're not in trouble. That's the voice of a fool. That's a sacrifice of a fool. What a waste of a life. Better is the guy that go out and curse God and swear and steal and whatever because he's at least honest with himself. 
What a fool, the man that says, I'm following God, but everything, there's not a thing of, I'm hearing God, I'm going to go obey Him. I'm hearing God and I will obey Him. For those who know the truth and does not do it, that is sin. The word says. You are still here? Guard your steps. Be careful how you walk. For to draw near. Why you draw near also? So that you will hear God, you will obey Him. That is so much better than to give the sacrifice of fools. Carelessly. You, must, you just do what you do. How are you careless? Your heart is not in it. Your heart is not in it. You don't hear with heart. Are you with me? Ignorant. Ignorance. The ignorancy that many times we don't even know. We are busy with evil. You say, no, you're working here. Everybody awake, please. But what you hear, you're going to do as an honor. Amen. Next one. You are still writing down. And I, the Lord, will give them one heart. Everybody say a new heart. And put a new spirit within them. I will take from them the heart of stone. I will give them a heart of flesh that is responsive to my touch. Oh, man, that is an awesome part. You say, I have a heart. Oh, let's try that. I have a heart that is responsive to the touch of God. Oh, that is said so beautifully in the Amplified. I will give him a heart that is responsive to my touch. You've written that down. Unfortunately, hell knows it. And some, for some way, you know, you're, there's that person, you are oversensitive with the person. Let him just say, or let her just say something in a certain line. You are so touchy, like we say, that you are very quick to respond. You are very responsive to the touch of their words or their actions or how evil they are doing, uh, how fleshly, how selfish, how they are, can break you down. Every, anybody uh, experience that in your life, that you got hurt by somebody or that you're disappointed with somebody and you are so sensitive, so sensitive to that situation or to that person, you give them that space that you are so responsive to what they do, so responsive to their touch, with their words, with their actions, in front of you, behind your back, whatever, wherever. Oh man, the devil cannot, can only copycat. God want to give you this heart, my brother, my sister, here with heart, here with heart, here with heart. But he wants to give you that heart that is so open, that is so responsive, that is so soft. That you are so responsive to his touch. Okay, next one. I will give it to them that they may walk in my statues and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. So that they will walk. They will hear and obey. I will give them a soft heart. And they will be responsive to my touch. So that what? They will hear and obey. They will hear and obey. Next one. Jeremiah 32 verse 39. Okay, I will give them singleness of heart. This is now Jeremiah, not Ezekiel. And action. Singleness of heart and action. Let's say singleness of heart and action. He's not going without action. Otherwise, it's fake. Fake heart. So that they will always fear me and that all will then go well for them and for their children after them. God, what is God's heart? He wants it to go well with you and with your children. He wants to bless your children, my brother, my sister. Don't pray God must bless your children, but you just wara wara with your heart without respect for God. You better fear God. You better fear God. You want your children to be blessed? Get your life in line. Don't be bought with the word of God. Go for deliverance. Let the demon be cast out of you if you are bought. If you cannot even, I'm not saying you must become more awake now. Even if the sermon is long. If you are so tired, so tired of this, just cast out that immaturity. Are you with me? When we had with Dr. Jennifer some sessions and oh, going for an hour and a half. And sometimes I said, God help me. 
And I, it's like I must choose. So I will be awake because my spirit is hungry. My spirit is alive. My spirit is alive when God is speaking. But I don't allow my spirit. I'm ignorant of what is in my spirit. I am ignorant to how the, the genuine me is responding. My soul feels like, oh, the hair. I'm now finished. Your spirit is awake. Your spirit is awake. Be aware of your spirit. Worship God from your spirit and in truth. Amen. So that what? Singleness of heart. When you have one heart, you have respect. When you hear the word of God, you will have respect. It's not like I've heard the word of God, and, but it doesn't touch me. Because my heart is not responsive to his touch. My brother, my sister, he's touching you through his word. He's touching you, the living God. The living word, the living God is touching you through his word. Learn how to be responsive to his touch. Not the word of bitterness, not the word of lust, not the word of the temptation. You are responsive to that temptation to steal, responsive to that temptation to, to, to lie, responsive to cheat, to, to responsive to, to go into crooked ways with finances. You are responsive when that thought comes. You can so easily respond to that gentle voice. God wants to bring it in you that you will be so responsive in a beautiful way to his touch on your life. Amen. For you and your children. Let's go. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good. Come on. God says, I will never stop doing good to them. And I will inspire them to fear me so that they will never turn away from me. That's such a beautiful, beautiful promises. You're supposed to write it down. You write it down. Are you with me? Judah? I will not mention names, but you guys are already writing down. Okay. Good. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Is that it? Hmm. I will rejoice in doing them good and will assuredly plant them in this land. With all my heart and soul. God says, with all his heart, with all his soul. God, with all his heart and all his soul. He is rejoicing to do them good. God is excited, my brother, to bless you. God is excited to do something good in your life. And let's not be foolish, man. God is excited to do something good in your life. Are you with me? But he has put his whole heart and his whole soul in it. Your dad put his whole heart and his whole soul in it to do you good. He's so ready. He's so rejoicing to help you and to bless you. My Lord, help us to see the heart of our Father. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help us not to be ignorant, ignorant of your touch, your voice in us. Forgive us for not respecting your touch on our lives. Give us an undivided heart, please. Lord, help us to deal with that heart for that heart operation that we will give ourselves accurately. Please, Lord, I pray that you will touch every man, every woman in this place. And even now, as we will have communion, I pray that everybody will, will examine their own heart, Lord. And that you will come today and you will heal hearts. That right now we will choose to respect the blood more, that we will respect what people have done against us, so that we don't walk out here with more demonic authority, but that we will walk out here with more authority in the name of Jesus. We choose to respect the Ten Commandments. We choose to respect one another. We choose to respect our relationship with you in Jesus. By the, in Jesus' name, by the blood of Christ alone. So we come to the throne of grace and enter only through the blood. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name.